made a video, edited the video, uploaded it, then decided I didn't like the video. <laughs> so <laughs> this is take number two. Take number two. Let's do it. <laughs> video we're talking electrical components. All of my components, almost all of them, <laughs> have been delivered and I'm going to go through and show you what each of them are. Currently all of my electrical components are here in this very dark little closet that you can't really see. I'm going to bring you in closer in a second to show you what each of these different parts are. But I'm going to go through in this video and show you all of the parts as I'm unboxing them and tell you why I purchased them and what role they're going to play in the whole of my system. I'll even point out, part, <laughs> I'll even point out where they belong in the whole of this diagram. Well, it's not a diagram anymore. Originally, in the first video, it was a diagram. But in this video, it's the actual system spelled out for you. So let's get in close and personal and check it out. So this is my electrical closet. Over here I have my breaker boxes. That is my AC system breaker box. And down there is my DC breaker box all wired up nice and pretty. And a few other components along the way. This is the outside of the closet inside of my closet. You can see the components up there and down there. And then this guy opens up. And I have a few more components inside of here. And down at the very bottom of this box is where my battery is going to go once it's ordered and delivered. So that's a little glimpse of my electrical closet. Let's go and start unpacking the items, looking at each of the different parts of this thing that's behind me. Um, and I'll try to make sure, um, I am actually winging this video as we go along, but my goal, we'll see if I pull it off correctly, um, is to reference back to this actual closet when I'm pointing out to you where the individual components belong. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so we're gonna go through all of these boxes and I'll open them up and we'll look at what's inside and we'll talk about where they fit into the diagram and what they do. Starting off with this guy, I've had it for quite a while, but this is my MPPT charge controller. The one I decided to go with is made by Renogy and it is a 40 amp MPP charge controller. So what I like about this thing is that one, I'll show it to you. So what I like about it is one, it's absolutely beautiful. I am um, a design oriented human being and this is a well designed industrial object just on an aesthetic level. But other things that are really cool about it is that it has a load of different protections that can keep my battery safe and keep my house safe. Um, just in general. It has overcharge protection for my battery, undercharge protection for my battery. Um, not all uh, solar charge controllers have that feature, um, but this guy does. I am still on the fence about whether or not I should also get um, a Victron battery protect as well. I'm communicating with uh, Renogy right now to see what their advice is, um, if I should also get a battery protect in addition to this guy. Logically, to me it seems like I don't need to because this does both of those jobs but I do need to get a better understanding of under what circumstances does this do those jobs and um and if under those circumstances or under circumstances where it can't do that job do I need to get a battery protect as well All right so that's this guy first piece so this kind of feels like Christmas I really enjoy getting deliveries and I don't know what's in each individual box. 
I mean, I know what's in this whole mass of boxes as a whole, but on an individual box level, I'm not sure what I'm going to encounter as I go through them. Alright, so inside of this box, I have these guys. So these are little LED switches for my DC lights. So they have little lights on them here. I pick the green ones and I'll wire this into my DC system for my overhead lights and other lights that I'm going to have inside a shadow. And they'll essentially be my light switches. And so yeah, that's what these guys are. Right here. So this is my Victron battery monitor, but in addition to that, and inside of this packaging, it also comes with this guy, which is a thermometer that lets me test the temperature of my battery. This guy, which is a shunt for my electrical system. So when we're talking about where this guy fits on the diagram, it fits right about here. And what this does, it, collect, it connects to my negative cable and this thing sends the information to this guy here which will be my monitor that's located on the inside of shadow so that I can see um, my uh, power usage, I can see how much power my battery has, I can see um, how much power my battery has been fed. I can also see all of that information as well from my charge controller. Um, my charge controller has a Bluetooth option. I haven't decided if I want to buy the Bluetooth Connect because I can also just plug in to the charge controller using a USB cable in my computer and it will allow me to see all of the necessary information as well. So inside this box, I have this guy. So I purchased a series of breakers at different amperages. This is my 40 amp breaker and this guy is going to go right here on a diagram. And what this does is it protects my uh, charge controller from any like huge surges that may come from my solar panels. This guy will hit the switch disconnect my solar panels from my charge controller. Um, I'm still learning all of this information. I am a self-taught <laughs> uh, electric, tiny house electrical human being. So yeah, this thing will disconnect my solar panels from my charge, contro charge controller and protect it if something over 40 amps surges through uh, trying to make its way to my 40 amp charge controller, right? This guy here, so this piece of equipment here, this is my converter. This will convert 24, um, 24, 24 volts into 12 volts. So overall, my system that I'm going to set up in Shadow, it's going to be a 24 volt system. My uh, down to my charge controller, my battery is a is going to be a 24 volt battery. So the whole system is going to be 24 volts. But in order for me to connect my DC. Um, half of my system with my DC uh, fuse box and all of those things, I need to step that down from 24 to 12. And that's what this does. Cool. So this guy is my battery disconnect. It's my manual switch. So this guy is the ma my manual switch to disconnect my battery. So this is going to come in handy when I'm on the grid, when because my system is going to be hybrid. I'll be able to plug in, um, plug shadow in, and run off of grid powder power, and I will also be able to run off my solar. So when I'm plugged into the grid, I can come and switch this thing from off for well, from on to off, um, and this will disconnect the battery and. Uh, th I'm 
this is theoretical, I'm still learning it, but I think the way that it would work is I would turn this off, it would disconnect my battery, and then I would just turn my inverter off, and then the power being fed into my DC and my AC breaker box will come from the grid. So yeah, that's what this, this guy is, it's my manual battery disconnect. You know, Amazon, you use a whole lot of box for a little bit of product. I just want to say that. Keep it going. Seriously, a whole lot of box for... For a small amount of product. mentioned this before um, but if in, in case I didn't I'll go ahead and mention it now the battery that I'm going to use for my system is going to be a Tesla battery and there's a couple of things you need to take into consideration when using a Tesla battery and temperature is one of them I won't ever have to worry about the thing overheating because there's no way I'm going to put the kind of load on that battery that's necessary like the battery the battery needs something like 1100 amps or something to be pulled from it in order for it to get to a dangerous point of like heating up or even to start heating up we're talking like i'm not super sure about this but we're talking about something like 80,000 watts or 60,000 watts or something that you would have to be pulling off of the system in order for that battery to get to a dangerous place. But one thing the battery can do is get too cold. So what I have here, it is for reptile, t reptile tanks actually, but it's a heating pad with the thermostat. So I'm going to use this guy, uh, wrap it around the battery along with the temperature sensor and it will kick off and on when the battery gets too cold so that it can make sure the battery keeps um, above a temperature that's safe. Um, the temperature that's dangerous is basically if it gets down to freezing. And that is the only thing in this big box. My inverter. <laughs> so this guy, the last component in my system is my inverter. So Here's my inverter. I didn't go with a big name brand inverter. I went through Amazon and I really found one that had good reviews. Um, it seemed like a solid inverter from what I read across the board and I got this guy. It is a 3000 watt inverter, uh, which will be more than enough for the system that I'm gonna be setting up in shadow. So these are the components of my system. Um, there are things that I'm still questioning, still wondering if I need them or not, like I mentioned earlier, wondering do I need a battery protect or not, and I'll figure it out along the way, um, but for the most part, uh, this is it. Wait, I am missing things. So I guess I do have more deliveries coming. The things that I'm missing that I don't have right now, I'm missing a um, 150 watt or 150 amp breaker. I'm also missing an 80 amp breaker as well. Uh, this is where those guys go on the system. Yeah, so those guys haven't been delivered yet. I guess they'll get here at some point in the day. Other things I'm missing are my bus bar. So I have a positive and a negative bus bar. Um, and then I also ordered my wires. So I ordered one gauge wires uh, that I'm going to use to connect a lot of things within the system. And then outside of the one gauge wire, I'm going to be using an eight gauge to connect a lot of my other components um, together as well. So yeah, that's it guys. These are my components. I'm going to start the process today of like building out my cabinet, uh, and getting that situated, but that's going to be a totally different video from this video. Uh, and I will do my best to record all of that so you guys can see what that process looks like as, as well. Um, I also have some corrections, uh, 
corrections to make to the outlets that I've already set up in Shadow. I only have three more outlets to install, but I have to make corrections to the like 11 other ones that I put in. Um, but that will also be another video and I'll show you what I did wrong and I'll show you how to fix it. Um, other than that, that's all I got for you today. My dogs are barking. Don't worry about those guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up. All of the items that I have shown you today, I'm going to list them below in the comment section or in the section where I say things about these videos. I'm going to list it below in there with links so that if you are wanting to set up a system like mine, you'll be able to go in um, and just buy the same items that I purchased. Make it easy. I did a lot of research to find these things um, so I can cut some of the guesswork out of it for you and you can just go in and get the things that I got and make it work for you. All right, guys, this is goodbye for real this time. Thank you for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. Share it. Tell a friend. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's going to be so much more content coming your way. There's a lot of work left to do on Shadow, and I am on a deadline. Countdown to Bishop is what's happening. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm trying to get Shadow as close to finish as possible so I can drive it over to Bishop for a rock climbing event that I'm super stoked about with my friends. Yes, that's it. See you guys next time. Peace.